that is live. All right. So today we're going to talk about uh, the cashless society. And uh, today I've also got Mike Palmer here, who is the spearhead of fighting back or against the cashless society. A lot of Australians are probably, you guys at home are probably wondering who's actually pushing back. Are we just going to wait until they start locking us up in our homes again and take all of our cash and all of our uh, savings? Well, we've got Mike Palmer here, and uh, we're going to talk about how you at home can fight back against the cashless society. Also, the first half is going to be, uh, you know, general information and how you can fight back the second half is where the juicy stuff is so we'll get into that afterwards but uh mike thanks for coming on hi thanks for having me mate appreciate it so i think we'll start off with the basics how do we know that the government actually wants to turn us into a cashless society how do we know that this is even a thing or is this a conspiracy theory I think the facts uh, speak for themselves pretty clearly. Uh, I think anyone with even one eye half open out there can see um, you know, how strongly uh, the government is pushing us to become uh, cashless. And not only how strongly, but how quickly. Uh, how many uh, bank branches uh, have been closing down in the last 12 to 18 months, especially in regional uh, areas, uh, a number of businesses uh, have decided to go cashless uh, again in that uh, same period and, and it seems to be escalating every week. Uh, even the mainstream media uh, have caught on to it now and, and even they are reporting you know, news.com.au, you know, Channel 9, Channel 7, uh, you, know, these, you know, completely mainstream media channels are now reporting on this, you know, this big push. Uh, for Australia to become cashless. So uh, I don't think there's any, uh, there's any doubt that it's, uh, it's definitely a real thing. Mm. Um, your your audio is a little bit off every now and then. I don't know why. Uh, I guess we'll, we'll just we'll just battle through. Um, okay, so I, I've seen it myself. I've I've put up videos myself where I'd I'd go into Woolworths and they've removed all of the uh, machines that take cash and they're mm -hmm. just putting in the cards um and uh so why do you think uh have you done research or because you're you're running a big group you're the the spearhead here you're probably speaking to a lot of people uh uh why does the government want to turn cashless what have you found out Oh, it's all about control. It's it's just simply another step in their overall, you know, agenda twenty thirty uh, to have complete control over people. Um, obviously, you know, having cash gives you the freedom to buy what you want, when you want, where you want. Um, no, nobody knows. It's none of anyone's business, uh, and they don't like that. So uh, by uh, pushing everybody into using. You know, online transactions, tap and go transactions, that can all be fully traced and tracked. And once they eliminate cash, they then track all of your spending and they go, Hey, we don't like what you're spending your money on. We're gonna we're gonna stop you from doing it. I mean, again, this is not some conspiracy. Anyone who's got a Commonwealth uh, bank account uh, will have received either a, a letter or a, a text message or, or, or some form of communication saying, Hey, we are now restricting uh, the amount of money that we will allow you to pay um, towards uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, you know, of course, they're doing it all for your safety because people have been losing money in crypto and all the rest of it. But there's already signs that they are controlling what you can and can't spend uh, your money on. Uh, they're already closing down bank accounts of, of you know, freedom fighters or you know, whatever label you want to give them, um, you know, here and overseas. Uh, there's been many, many reports of that. So uh, when, you know, when everything is centred around the actual bank account, they can just press a button, turn it off, and, and, and that's it. So, you know, it forces yeah. people to comply. Yeah, I've no, I, uh, when I was looking at, into, you know, back in 2015, 16, when I first started running this channel, I was looking at how the economy runs and I came to the conclusion myself just from a, just looking at the overall economy 
it would be far easier for the government to figure out what the exact interest rate would be uh, when they know exactly where all the money's going. And so I came to that same conclusion, but didn't back then even think about uh, what the consequences of having a cashless society would be. Uh, and this is how you see China, when they, they, they went cashless, they also simultaneously put a social credit system in place. Uh, but they know exactly how much cash is in the system or currency or fiat currency. They, they know, you know, exactly how much to expand it or, uh, reduce it they know exactly where every cent is being spent which helps government control the economy but it also um, comes with authoritarian or totalitarian rule which is unfortunate as well um, Absolutely. and uh, that also has another problem attached to it is the government will be able to choose who can take their currency out of the country as well and go on holidays you know, yeah. maybe maybe you're taking too many sick days this year, so you're not allowed to go to Bali until 2025. Yeah. Um, uh, things like that are real. Uh, it's not a conspiracy. It's something that yeah. they're actually planning. And the the current the the cryptocurrency that you mentioned, mm. uh, buying Bitcoin is literally the only way outside of that system. You can get on a flight. You can get in a dinghy and escape Australia. Go to Bali and spend your Bitcoin and uh you know probably never come back so that's something mm. that the government's worried about um yeah. so okay so you've noticed you know so we've established that the government wants to do this and we've we're starting to notice signs of it and mm -hmm. a little bit of growth as in they're starting to shut down uh, not only bank accounts but they're also that's the totalitarian part of it mm. social credit but they're also <laughs> shutting down uh, access to cash in the system. Yep. Now, Absolutely. when you came to that realization, uh, what did you start doing about that? Well, I, I mean, I, I use cash for everything and I encourage people to use cash for everything and every opportunity. Uh, I encourage people to go into their, their banks and just take cash out every single day if you can. Uh, I know that's probably not realistic for, for some people, but certainly a year, at least once or twice a week. Um, and if you can't get into a branch because of timing or they've closed one down in your area or whatever, just go and take it out of the ATM. And go and take you know even if it's just a couple hundred dollars just go and and, and just keep using cash uh at every yeah. opportunity it's, it's it's so so important because they they work off statistics and numbers and of course they skew them and twist them to suit their own purpose but at the end of the day there's there is a significantly reduced number of people using cash i mean everyone walks around with their tap and go cards they do it with their phones and all that sort of stuff now because it's all mm. And, and, and so they rely on that and they go, oh, well, you know, 80% of people, you know, use their, their their phones or their cards to tap and go for, you know, anything under $1,000 or whatever it is. And so they go, well, look, we're relying on that to, to you know, to, uh, you know, stop putting cash into the uh, into the system and mm -hmm. reduce cash usage. Um, so if we can get people start using cash at every, I mean, there's still a lot of places you can pay cash. Um, you know, people don't realise. I mean, obviously, you know, your, your, your supermarkets, you can pay for your petrol with cash. You can even pay most of your utility bills, you know, either at the, you know, your Telstra, Vodafone, whatever, or, you know, through Ozpost, things like that. So there are still avenues, but people just go, oh, it's just easy. Just, I'll just do direct debit or I'll just, you know, use my credit card. And, and of course, that's what they're relying on. And, uh, you know, people are predominantly lazy. They want the easiest, you know, easiest approach. <clears throat> And uh, of course, that's what the that's what the government banks on. Literally, is that people are going to keep you know using the yeah. easy approach. As I say to people, you know, all right, sure, it might be convenient now, but once once everything goes cashless, the ultimate aim is, of course, that you know the 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 bio you know implants the chips in in people. Um, because of course, that's going to be easy. You know, program phone or wallet or anything. It's all just done by your wrist. And you know, as I said, they, they press the button, they turn off the, the chip and that's it. It's 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 game over. So, you know, this mm. is what they're 
constantly pushing towards and people people don't see the bigger picture people don't think a few steps ahead and go oh yeah it's all right it's convenient to tap and go but what's you know it's not going to be convenient when you look at what that leads to in another you know, five or ten years down the track i think you'll be very happy to hear my story i've got i've got a land rates uh bill to pay mm-hmm. and uh one and a half k and uh yep. I I'm going in there with a wad of fifties. Um, Perfect, Great. absolutely. The only the only thing is uh, I have noticed that there is a strata bill actually. Strata mm-hmm. doesn't take cash anymore, so they're cutting mm-hmm. out some of the utilities. Uh, yeah. But every other bill, I'll go down there, try to go to the, down to the post office. I'll pay in cash. I also yep. am fully aware that we've been suffering from. 10 20 percent fluctuating inflation over the last couple of years um mm-hmm. and so i have absolutely no problem avoiding paying any sort of taxes to this awful government um and i'll take cash at every opportunity which is actually it's actually part of the australian culture not to oh, not to pay not to pay tax and and take a cash job here here and there it's actually uh, uh maybe abroad in in other countries e- even though um actually income tax uh is not uh, a legal requirement in the united states by the way it's in their constitution mm-hmm. that a lot not allowed that they don't have to pay it mm-hmm. um some of those things are still part of the australian culture but in um in sydney it, it has become a bit of a status play to pull out your card and go tap tap like a mm-hmm. wanker like a yeah. fucking wanker and you see them all over the city they're, they're wearing their suits they're wearing their uh their hillary clinton pantsuits and they're tapping on everything they 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 tap to buy their starbucks coffee they tap when they hit yeah. the restaurant they're like don't worry don't worry everyone i got the bill tap tap and then they get on the the, the bus or the train and they tap tap um when you pull out cash in front of these people, it's almost like, oh, this this person's lower class. Um, mm. But they don't realize that they're actually leading us down towards a Soviet Union style so uh, totalitarian government. Mm. Um, and the people that pull out the cash are the ones that are going to keep us safe. Um, unfortunately, you know, you can buy all the Bitcoin you want and it's not necessarily going to be as much of an impact as pulling out some cash. So you guys at home, uh, please hold some cash, um, you know, withdraw some cash and pay some, enter some shops and uh, keep the cash uh, moving around if possible. Now, um, what are some of your... Uh, because you're the spearhead, you and Ian, I spoke to Ian as well. You, you guys are at the tip of the spear fighting back. What are what are some of the things apart from just educating people and making sure they're holding cash? What are your some of the guys that are in the groups? What, what are they doing themselves? Uh, well, look, there's, there's a bunch of different uh, things. I said, obviously, you know, using cash, going into banks, you know, is, is a big one because they're trying to, I mean, banks are going cashless now. I mean, have you ever heard of anything? Yeah. Saying, I mean, the whole point of a bank is to hold your money and they want to go cashless. Uh, I, I, we just got back from our Perth events and we actually went to the Perth Mint where they actually make our currency and the Perth Mint is now cashless. I mean, it's just nuts. It's absolutely insane. Mm. So uh, just pushing at every opportunity. So we say to people, you know, go into the banks, use the tellers, uh, you know, let them know that, you know, cash transactions, you know, are still important, not just, oh, we want to do everything online and over the phone and, and all that sort of thing. Uh, obviously, we started up the uh, the call-out cashless businesses uh, Facebook group, uh, and, I mean, that, that thing just exploded. We, we've got, you know, 40,000 members in about two months. And, you know, people are now naming and shaming businesses that are refusing to accept cash. And, um, you know, again, if you want to make, you know, if you're a business owner, I understand you want to make as many payment options available as you can. Um, so, you know, you want to make tap and go payments available. Okay, no problem. But you, 
you know, don't refuse to take cash. That that's just crazy. Mm. And they come up with all these ridiculous excuses. Oh, it's not safe anymore. And oh, you know, we don't have time to get to the bank. And oh, but the staff could skim off the top. And mate, that's been going on for a hundred years. <laughs> that's not mm. changed. So yeah. why all of a sudden are they going cashless just in the last twelve to eighteen months? It doesn't mm. make any sense. Um, mm. So, and again, as a business owner, you would think that you would want to take as many forms of payment as you possibly can. You know, take cash, mm. take credit card, take gold and silver coins, take live chickens, you know, pay me however you want, <laughs> you know. Mm. But that they're, they're all trying to, you know, comply with the system and this is this is the problem. So we need yeah. to, you know, we need people to go into these businesses and and say, oh, you're not, you, you know, you don't take cash. And then, you know, you're not getting my business and walk out. And the more people that you know that, that speak with their wallets, speak with their feet and and take action, the quicker these businesses will, will, will get the message that, oh, all right, yeah. well, yeah, we don't have to be, you know, completely all cash, but we do need to keep accepting cash, otherwise we're gonna lose money. Mm. Um yeah, yeah, actually I, I discovered you guys through a friend who was telling me about it, and mm. he was going out and uh whenever he would find a cashless business uh him and a bunch of other guys would go in there so for instance uh there was a shopping center i don't know exactly where it was but it totally went cashless they did a trial i think it might have been woolworths or coles yeah uh, and him and a whole bunch of people went in there and filled their trolleys to the absolute brim uh yeah. and just filled it with everything off the shelves and they all got in one line and then went to the front and goes oh yeah oh you don't keep you don't take cash oh okay well i, I guess you're gonna have to put my whole trolley away and then the next guy goes in like oh you don't take cash and they and and they they just kept doing that consistently yeah. and Brilliant. just making yeah. the the staff put all of the all of the stock back on the shelves and and being a nuisance but uh, they got the message, and uh, some of those businesses have uh, started taking cash because mm -hmm. it gets back to the manager. The manager it goes all the way up the chain of command, and they realize that it's actually costing them money to not take cash. Correct. Um, yep. And uh, so there are some things that you guys at home can actually do, and it, it doesn't take a lot of time out of you. You know, you, like you, you're bored on a what is it? This is Sunday lunchtime. You you're bored. <laughs> You want to go for a walk, just stock up some stuff in a trolley and go to the front of the line and hold up everybody behind behind you and go and just keep asking why, why, why don't you take cash? Oh, sorry, I, I didn't realize that and just become a bit of a nuisance and then go home and at least know that you've done something. <laughs> yeah. uh, what, what other actions are your members taking? Um, so I, I think the education side of it is, is really the big thing. Uh, and and that is just having conversations with these you know business owners and, and just educating them because a lot of them don't realise that they're actually being charged um, a fee. So every time you know you walk into a business and you tap and go, they're being actually charged a fee, and in in most instances, so is the customer as well. So this is this, yeah. is, you know, this is the problem. That, you know, the people who are using the tap and go don't realise how much extra they're paying for these things in fees. They think, oh, it's only 1% or 1.5%. But over, you know, the course of a week, if you do a yeah. $1,000 worth of tapping and going, that, that makes a, you know, a big difference. And you extrapolate that over the course of a year, and that's money you're just absolutely throwing yeah. away for no benefit whatsoever. It's it's yeah. just gone for nothing, all because you can't yeah. be bothered going to an ATM, taking out cash, and pulling it out of your wallet and handing it over. Um, yeah. And again, and it's the same for for businesses, but even expanded because you know, as a as a consumer, you you know, you might you know, for I'm going to say, spend five hundred dollars a week on on, on stuff. Um, but as a business owner, you know, you're probably turning over, you know, for argument's sake, you know, five thousand you know dollars a week and you're paying that fee on all of that turnover when it's when it's all yeah. tap and go so it's about mm. educating the, the the business owners and again you know, there's no point walking into your you know your Woolworths or your Coles and, and trying to do this but in my smaller you know, smaller businesses um absolutely it, it, it's trying to educate the the actual business owners so that they understand how much this is actually possible 
Oh, it's quicker if people just tap and go and I don't have to send one of my staff down to the, the bank during the, the, the lunch hour and pay them an extra hour of wage. But hang on a minute. Okay, so you're paying someone 30 bucks an hour, so they take an hour off to go to the bank, as opposed to how much you're paying fees over that day's takings and turnover. You know, they, they don't yeah. think in those, those terms. They just they just think in the here and now with the blinkers on and just, oh, I can't afford, you know, Mary yeah. or Jane to be away from, you know, from the office for an hour. Um, that's part that of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's part of it. People aren't aware of of the fees and how much it costs them. Uh, and let's just, let's just say, you know, what does the government think the inflation rate at the moment is? What what hmm. do they think it is? Three? Oh, I, I don't no, even know. No, I, think, I think they're still talking in the six and sevens, but I mean, we all know. Okay. It's, well, they, they they just yeah, what, whatever they say it is, it's all it's always double. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah and and let's just say it's six for argument's sake, you know, and then 1% of every cent that you spend uh, goes, then you need to take a proportion of that and add that to a, a form of inflation, a form of That's hidden funny. tax. You know, the, the saying is that if you, uh, you, you tap on and you pay it to the, uh, the shop, then the shop needs to pay someone else, then they need to pay something else and it goes around the economy it ends up at zero <laughs> but if you, if i give a 50 dollar note to yeah. the shop owner then they give it to someone else it goes all the way around the economy it's still 50 dollars, and it's not Absolutely. being stolen by um the banks and and this is where the banks get a lot of their power as well absolutely uh, banks just and, keep getting rich off this yeah. it doesn't benefit anybody else it's just the banks and it's, and the, it's just extracting yeah. more money from from society. Yeah. And it's the if there's if there's someone in between you and whoever the the transaction, whoever you're buying it from, that person in between is always taking a cut, and that's why, uh, you know, cash you just have to deal with inflation. But uh, if you have, uh, for instance, Bitcoin, it is direct mm. peer to peer payment, and the money. Uh, the money, the fee of transacting goes to other people within the system. It actually mm. goes to the general society. It doesn't go to one banking entity. That's that's the beauty yeah. of um, I know I, I keep bringing up Bitcoin because I've, I've decided to just put my life savings in there, go hard <laughs> after what I've been seeing. Um, yeah. So, okay. Uh, is there any any other actions or any other uh, info about what the people at home, what action they can take? Um, we'll, um, I'll let people know about the group to join up, of course, and um, maybe, you know, they can search up Mike Palmer and uh, send you a DM on uh, Facebook as well. Um, what other information can the people at home um you know, um, I think the other one that, that we keep coming across all the time is uh, people don't realise that, uh, you know, yes, businesses can actually refuse cash. Uh, there's, there's this sort of misnomer out there that, oh, you know, they have to take cash. And no, you, as a business owner, you can set whatever terms of, of payment you like. You can say, well, you know, I'll only take payment in live chickens. Um, you're probably not going to get a lot of business, but you can do that. Um, but the the way I like to to reframe that for people is, uh, you know, th th there's a big difference between legal and moral, um, and, you know, and, and everything that's um, you know morally wrong isn't always legally wrong and vice versa. So um, yes, it is. You know, it is legal to refuse cash, uh, but similarly, you know, it's legal to have an affair. It's legal to commit adultery. You don't go to jail or get a fine for that. But most people, I'm sure, who you, you know, viewers and listeners will agree that you know adultery, cheating, whatever you want to call it, is, is definitely immoral. Um, and, and so I would say, oh, oh, but it's it's legal to refuse. Yeah, it's legal to have a fair too. It doesn't make right. Um, and yeah, it is not right, as you pointed out, especially in this country. Um, you know, it's it's un-Australian to refuse to accept cash. So, um, you know, just if you if your listeners do want to go out there and, and, and talk to business owners, just be aware um, that, you know, yes, some of them will try and say, oh, but it's legal. Well, maybe, 
I, I think I lose the audio when you your voice goes up. Ah, okay. I think it, it might be the echo in that room, maybe. Ah, uh, could be. Yeah, could be. you'll you'll see. I'll, I'll send you the video. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. That that that's a that's another issue that uh, with societies that there's always morals um uh, morals and the and people at home if you're thinking about morals in society and if you're thinking oh look uh there's uh the government's brought in this law or rule and uh, and you conflate the two and you say that morals and the laws are the same they're not uh the the, the government decides that they want to take something from you, so then they tell the, the media to tell you that it is morally wrong. Um, mm. And then you actually believe it, and that's part of the whole PSYOP and how they control us in society. Remember it was morally wrong to uh, to not wear a mask because of cough cough um, or, or it was morally wrong to not take a jab jab um, yeah, yeah. Well, in, in fact, it was actually morally right to spread spread it and get some sort of uh, herd immunity around uh, society because Sweden won, guys. So the, yeah. the morals that you've been told in that case were totally wrong. And uh, taking the jab jab, my, my sister woke up next to a cold corpse. Her, her husband died in his sleep. And she literally just turned 30. So she's now a widower thanks to the jab jab. So if you guys out there that were yelling and screaming online, you, you, you're effectively immoral. Um, and so with that as, as a, a, a recent uh, thing that has happened with the government lying to you guys, uh, you, I think you have a moral obligation to avoid tax, avoid inflation, <laughs> uh, not give this government as much money as they're stealing from us every day um, because uh, things are only going to get worse. Um, okay, well, how about, so this part here for you guys, this is the part that's going to be on YouTube. And uh, now I'd like to get into, uh, I'm going to cut it off here. If you want to see the second half of this video, you're going to have to join the channel. Um, click the join button. Uh, there's a monthly fee or whatever, uh, but uh, but before we go, you you can search up Mike Palmer and uh, send him a DM on Facebook, uh, and also he has a Facebook group called what, what's the exact wording of it? So it's Call Out Cashless Businesses. There you go, uh, and go to the Facebook group, join up. Um, I've had a look in there, and whenever you come across a cashless business in Australia, take a photo of them, take a video, call them out, put it in the group, 